Hi everybody, welcome back. JJ here with Queers and Steers. Welcome to my apartment. It's a beautiful studio in downtown Los Angeles. This episode today is essentially a verbal agreement with myself to never willingly drive or purchase a vehicle with an internal combustion engine again. My car is at the dealership for some service, which I will get into later. I actually talked about it in one of my previous videos, but I finally took it in for service. We'll get into that. But before we get there, I wanna do something fun. So, I don't know if the, the straight people who watch my channel know that Lady Gaga has a little partnership with Oreo to make some like Chromatica themed green and pink Oreo. So I thought it would be fun today before I start is to do a little like review plug of these because hello, I'm a homosexual. <laughs> Surprise! And we wanna just try out these Oreos. So let's break into this bag and see how they taste. All right, so at first glance, like the packaging is cute. Like obviously homosexuals love pink. We love Lady Gaga, like we stand. I actually saw Lady Gaga in concert on my birthday, 2013 or 2014, maybe later. It was when Art Prop came out, but I actually, funny enough, I said Art Perp, funny enough. So I got this from that concert in Chicago at the United Center and one of the dancers pulled this little thing out of their crotch and threw it in the crowd and I like elbowed somebody in the face for it and I've kept it ever since. I haven't washed it either. I wonder what it smells like. It doesn't smell like dick, unfortunately. So upon first glance, like, oh, look at the nails too, pink nails. So upon first glance, I love the packaging. It's iconic. It is foil. It's bright. It captures your attention. It looks like the cookies are breaking through. Very cute, we love that. I don't know if I can open this and film with one hand. I'm gonna try, because that's what people want. Okay, I tried, I really just couldn't do it. So this is what they look like. They're kind of cute, it says Chromatica on the other side. It just says Oreo as we would expect. Um, I think they all, I wonder if they all have like different designs. Oh yeah, so this is like her weird like alien Chromatica logo. I don't really get what it is. It looks like a person in platform heels wearing a mask with like worms on it. I don't know, but that's like her Chromatica logo. So upon first glance, like same shape, same design, but um, the green filling is interesting. So I'm just gonna like take a bite of this and tell you what I think. Huh. Is my tongue green? Uh, it reminds me of the vanilla Oreos, like the vanilla golden ones, with maybe like a little bit more sugary flavor to it. It's not bad. So I don't eat a lot of sweets or cookies or candy or anything like that. I'm gonna have another one. <laughs> They're kind of addicting. But like the cookie part seems like crunchier, like a little crispier. Yeah, the cookie definitely seems like harder to chew. It's like a little crunchier. And it's like a very, just like vanilla-y, sugary flavor. I'm actually kind of a fan. I'll give it like a, an eight out of 10. It's fine, it's an Oreo. Lady Gaga, great job. You're probably like, you crazy homosexual, you really bought five of these. One is for me to eat like today. One is probably gonna be for a gift. Another one is gonna be like for the archive. So like in 50 years, if I need to sell this for millions of dollars, I can. And then these two are just like, man, you never know what you're gonna need more for. So that was my Lady Gaga Chromatica review. Let's get into some car shit. So there's a couple that lives on my floor. They have like 800 children. They're never wearing a mask. Not a single one of them is wearing a mask. And we have signs all over our building like, masks required to walk around the halls. And every time I like see them getting in the elevator at the same time as me or something, we just look at each other like, put on a fucking mask in public. Jesus, it's not that fucking hard. As I mentioned in one of my last videos, my car is in for service. There was like a little squeaky noise coming from the rear end. So some of you had mentioned that it was potentially a dust cover on one of the dampers, whatever the case may be, they're looking at it. They've had it for, four days now.
I haven't heard anything back, but in the meantime, I have a little loaner car. So as a loaner, they gave me the 2021 Volvo S90. And I will say, you know, for, uh, you know, base this car is 60 grand, or excuse me, base this car is about 55 grand. Having driven this car for about four days now, the Volvo influence is real. Like when I think about all of the buttons and features in my Polestar, very similar, very similar. But um, the video for today is honestly like, I'm gonna do a review of this. And just again, to do the conclusion at the beginning, I kind of hate it. Like, I hate that I'm saying that about a $60,000 car, but after having driven an EV, a pure EV for over a month now, almost two months, going back to an internal combustion engine feels like I'm in a blimp in the 1930s, honestly. Let's get in this car, shall we? So upon sitting into this car, some of the things that I notice are, I'm gonna take my mask off now that I'm safely inside of my vehicle, jackasses. The thing that I first noticed is the digital gauge cluster. I've test driven Volvos in the past. I've test driven an XC40, an S60, and while it's great to have digital displays and things, you can tell just based on the the refresh rate of this, of the speedometer, you could tell it's kind of like needs an update. It's just not very, it's not very quick to load. You can tell the graphics are a little slow, a little bit laggy. So uh, I think that it's in need of a refresh. My assumption is that the whole Volvo line will eventually move to the Google Android Automotive OS throughout their cars. It just makes the most sense. But in the meantime, for this car to still have software that to me has been, hasn't been updated much over the years is, is disappointing. So in addition to the digital gauge cluster, another thing I wanna talk about is the screen. I remember seeing these you know, years ago, I don't remember. I mean, I test drove the XC40. I'm sure it's been at least four or five years. Whenever it first came out is when I test drove it. When I was living in Chicago, it was like winter time in Chicago. And I thought this screen was amazing. Looking at this now, look how tiny this screen is. I'm going to hold my, my iPhone 12 Pro Max up for comparison. Like my phone, <laughs> like my phone feels like the same size as, as this screen. The screen is tiny. Like for a $60,000 car, this is giving me like Subaru Honda Accord circa 2014, 2015. This is not giving me 2021 $60,000 luxury car. So this screen real estate is not the greatest. It also is not very snappy. Um, as you can see, like I'm swiping between menus. It's like kind of intuitive. Um, see, I'm swipe. <sighs> Make it stop! Yeah, not very, not very intuitive, not very responsive. So I would honestly rate this infotainment system. I mean, compared to some others I've used out there with like a scrolly wheel or something like Mercedes Benz. I haven't really tried the new M Bucks Mercedes Benz um, AI powered infotainment system, but compared to that, this is like a zero out of ten. Compared to a bunch of others, I'll maybe give it like a three or a four, but overall in 2021, this is not good. This is not a good look. And the other thing I know I had mentioned in uh, my one of my Polestar videos, I love accessibility. So as you can see, I finally painted them. Woo! As you can see, like having long nails, accessibility is really important. This screen speaks exactly to why I hate this design. So when you have a screen that's pushed back with like an edge around it, if I wanna touch something up here, like, so you have to swipe from the top to get to the settings or you can, I have to you, you turn my finger or use my thumb. Yeah, see, this is not responsive. I have to use my thumb to get what I want. Um, there's a home button down here. That one's been easy to press, but even like down here, if I wanna do the heated seats or heated anything, I have to like turn my finger and use, you know, weird workflows that doesn't make sense for someone with long nails. So again, like small screen, hard to access if you're somebody with long nails. I do like that there are some more physical buttons. I do really actually prefer where this volume knob is compared to the one on the Polestar. Um, it's just a little bit easier to grab, I would say. But again, overall, um, not a big fan of this.
Okay, let's get on the road. I'm going to drive somewhere with some more sunlight so we're not in this dark garage so you can actually see more of the car. But um, another thing I want to bring up too, starting a car, it feels so antiquated now. Like, hit the brake, turn this wheel, it comes to life. Yeah, see the graphics? It's just a little, it's a little old school. It's a little slow. Starting a car feels so unnecessary. So if you're unfamiliar, uh, when you get in the Polestar, you literally sit down in the seat. There are sensors inside of the seat that recognize you, and all you have to do is put the car in drive and you're off. Whereas this, you have to get in the car, turn the wheel, there's a slight delay to turn on the car, it spools up, and then you're ready to go. I feel like I'm in the olden days. But let's get out of this dark garage into some light and I will talk about some more. So this video will probably be a little bit all over the place. I'm just gonna highlight features as I'm driving and as they come up. Some of the things, again, that I really love about this car, the panoramic roof that opens, there was just something so luxurious about having a car where the sunroof opens. Now the Polestar has like a, a static glass roof. It doesn't open or it, it doesn't have a sunshade. So there's something nice about having a sunshade in this one as well as just the fact that it opens up all the way and can get fresh air. There's just something luxe about that. This car does have automatic start stop. One thing that's interesting about this car, sometimes I will floor it. Like, you hear that? Like I literally put the, the accelerator to the floor and it doesn't do anything. Like the engine revs with the turbo lag is absolutely ridiculous. So this car is uh, 316 horsepower, 295 pound feet of torque, which, you know, seems substantial to me, but it really, people are on one today. In contrast, the Polestar, and again, I'm just doing this by memory. It's a 408 horsepower, and I believe 487 pound feet of torque. So. Obviously the Polestar has considerable, considerably more power than this car has, but there's just something about pushing the accelerator all the way down and it not going anywhere. Like again, watch, can you listen, hear this? The RPM goes up, but it's not, there's just so much lag. Like, it feels like I'm in the, the manual mode. You know how when you put the car in manual mode and you're revving and it's just not switching gears? That's what this feels like. Off the top of my head, I'm getting some flashbacks of some Volvo engine reviews of just saying, people saying that they're unrefined. Um, I'm definitely getting a little bit of that in this powertrain. Now that we're in the sunlight, these seats. So the seats are leather on the edges and then this like very soft suede, I think it's called Nubuck trim on the inside. Really, really comfortable. I actually really like these seats. They are heated. The steering wheel is heated. It feels pretty good. It's just homeless people in the streets. Los Angeles used to be the city of angels. Now it's the city of corruption and homelessness and a government that seems to not give a fuck about any of it. But I do love these seats. They're very comfortable. They are heated. One thing that this car has is the climate package. So the climate package is 750 bucks. It has a heated steering wheel, heated rear seats, which I will climb back there some sometime, and heated windshield washer nozzles. So again, that's a $750 package. This car also has a $1,700 advanced package, which has a head-up display. It has a 360 degree camera, and it also has a, a power trunk as well, which um, it's interesting when I open and close the trunk, it sounds exactly the same as my Polestar does. So again, a lot of Volvo influence thinking back, even everything from the steering wheel buttons, like literally pulled, you know, the, the, the switches, everything is from very much from the same parts bin. Another thing about the Volvo S90, I don't get the same looks and attention that I get with the Polestar. Now, I know in my previous video, I had mentioned that I'm a really anxious person and that all of this attention is somewhat nerve wracking. It's kind of weird, like, I, I mean, that's kind of why I bought the Polestar too, right? It was weird, I knew that people were going to be excited, I wanted to talk to people about it, and with the Volvo S90, I don't get that attention. This is just another, you know, it's a nice looking car, not to say that people don't look at me sometimes because I just dress ridiculous, but it doesn't have that same appeal, it doesn't have that same attention. And But on the flip side, 
what's interesting is when I'm driving the Polestar 2, my car, when I park in a parking lot, I park far away. I like find somewhere that's nowhere near other cars just because it's new and I'm still, you know, still nervous about people bumping into it and stuff. Whereas this car, I'm like, oh, I don't give a fuck. Like I'll just park wherever there's a spot. And I know I'll probably get there with my car too, but there's, it's, it's twofold. It's like, I like not having the anxiety of having that brand new car, but I also miss the attention kind of like that excitement, like, ooh, what is this? So it's interesting, it's just an interesting perspective. One thing I really, really love about this car though, it really floats over bumps. I could drive over a hole in the road that is like two foot wide, six foot deep, and this car would just be like, uh, uh, excuse me. Oh my gosh, and it's so quiet. Now what's interesting is this car has the upgraded 20 inch wheels as well. It comes standard with 19, and despite the same size wheels as my Polestar 2, Oh my gosh, it just, this floats over bumps. And I really wish, uh, that's the one critique having the Polestar now for a couple months. I didn't think that the ride was as harsh as it was, but going over certain bumps, I'm like, ooh, yeah. And I think the car can use a little bit more sound deadening because in here it is, you can hear a pin drop in here. So hats off to this car. Another thing about the infotainment system, the settings in here are so comprehensive it's kind of insane so I can control the rear sun curtain from here I can control the passenger seat I can control the I can make the headsets in the back fold down um, yeah it's I feel like there's a lot more control of the other seating positions in this car which is pretty fucking cool so we're going up this hill I mean, it does the job, but it's just so, there's so much turbo lag. I've never, like, and maybe I'm just so not used to driving an internal combustion engine vehicle that this is surprising to me, but the engine really does feel unrefined. Like, it doesn't, the turbo lag is just so prominent. It's really surprising to me. All right, I found some sunlight. You're gonna get my shadow reflection in here, but I wanted to show you the outside. So it does have the upgraded 20 inch rims. Again, like the tire profile looks pretty similar to the, the Polestar 2, but again, this just soaks up the bumps. It's also the, the paint color. I know there's a flat black. I have to check the website to see if there is a metallic black. I mean, it looks pretty, pretty sparkly. Oh no, that's just dust. <laughs> so the, the paint option, if it's just the flat black, there's no cost to it. So again, this car was about 50, 55 and some change base, adding the $1,700 advance package with the power trunk and the head up display and 360 camera. That was 1700 bucks. And then of course the climate package with the heated rear seats and the heated washer nozzles etc bring the total of the car to 59 and some change so basically this car maxed out is the same as the base model Polestar 2 without any additions so the base model Polestar 2 is about 59,900 again they did that to keep it under 60 grand for the tax credit and then the only thing that I've added is the $5,000 rim package and the Brembo brakes and the dampers and all that stuff and then my paint was 1200 bucks so out the door my car was about 66 67,000 whereas again this one with all of the options are with a little bit more features like the head-up display softer ride etc maxes out around uh 59 and change as well so one of the cool things about the back seat and i would love to sit back here and have the car on but as soon as i get out of the car it turns off <laughs> so the back seats have their own climate control which i can also control from the front screen as well and then there are heated rear seats back here so again that was a part of the climate package overall from a comfort standpoint i mean that's my this is my seating position right here it's kind of dark um this is my seating position and the passenger seat is further back than mine and like comfort wise headroom is insane um I mean, even if like sitting up straight, like I'm totally upright, hella headroom, knee room and leg room is great. I have room for my feet. It is very cavernous back here. I'm assuming these seats fold all the way down, but 
the seats are really great. I really like the new buck soft material. Another thing that's really cool about the back seats. So not only can you control your, oh, it has, it has a button, like a, a pass through device. So if you're in the back seat and you're like, oh, this seat is the, the seat in front of me is too close. You can control it from the back seat. That is sickening. That is so cool. But it's weird because the left side only has the window switch, whereas the right side has all of these controls. So it's kind of like the right side is sort of like the executive side. That's so cool. You can control the sunroof from back here. I am gagged, bitch. <gasps> oh, sunroof. You can control the sunroof. I am deceased. I've never experienced this before. So yeah, this back right side is kind of like the executive boss bitch side. I bet you can control which window is this. I bet you can control the left window. <gasps> so power sun shades, you can control the left sun shade, the left window. The window goes eh, almost all the way down. Damn, someone come drive me because I am not leaving this seat. Like I can open the fucking sunroof. Bitch, I'm deceased. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. I've never honestly seen this before. Um, there's a little trash container there. Um, you can lock the doors from back here. Oh, you can control the back power sunshade as well. So that's very, I've honestly, yeah, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. Like I've never seen like the right side be the sort of like executive side, which makes sense, I guess. If you're, you know, if I'm picking up some bourgeois rich person in a Volvo S90, like they're gonna sit on this side, I'm the driver, I'm over here. That makes total sense. Um, it's kinda cool. It's kinda cool back here, not gonna lie. So again, 2021 S90 R design. Base is 55, 345. With the climate package for 750, advanced package for 1700, out the door. And I, I don't yet know actually if this car can park itself. Let's look. So this is the parking brake. Yeah, I wonder if it does park itself. Let's see. Again, starting a car. <laughs> so antiquated. Um, yeah, see, like I literally, I hate it. It's not intuitive at all. So it, it has park assist, like it'll beep at you, but it doesn't have active park assist. So active park assist is a $200 option. If you want the car to park itself, it can do that, but this model doesn't have it, which is totally fine. So again, about 55 grand for the base of this, 750 for the climate package, 1700. 1700 for the advanced package. Out the door, this is 59,640 bucks, which is literally like 250 bucks cheaper than the base model Polestar 2. So I think the pertinent question is, if you have $60,000, do you buy a 2021 Volvo S90 R design? Or am I going to buy the all electric Polestar 2? I want to talk again about the features that this car has that the Polestar doesn't. So this car has the insanely executive rear seat with like its own screen controls. I can control other people's windows and sunshades and the sunroof just from here. It has a huge back seat, very cavernous, just space in general in this car is not really an issue. This has the panoramic sunroof that opens up. This has the... Napa leather seats. This has a head-up display. It's also using Volvo's pretty outdated at this point operating system. Or would you rather have the all-electric Polestar 2? Again, just from a number standpoint, Polestar 2 has 400, a little over 400 horsepower, almost 500 pound-feet of torque. This has 300 horsepower, 295 pound-feet of torque. So automatically, like, the power that you're getting from the Polestar 2 is insane compared to this car. Ultimately, and again, after driving this car, I will never willingly purchase or drive an internal combustion engine car again. It just feels so 
it feels antiquated it feels unnecessary it feels like I mean, even if you go to Volvo's website right now and you click on cars, it automatically takes you to all of their electric models, whether that's the recharge, like the all electric SUV, the XC40 recharge, or it'll just take you to their plug-in hybrid models first. And then you have to click on other cars to even get to their internal combustion engine vehicles. So, I mean, Volvo across the board is, is leaning towards and getting to this place of all electric driving anyway. And so if you have 60 grand, sure like if you're just afraid to make the leap like get this car i think it's great for 60 grand again the engine is not very refined in my opinion but if you need gasoline or you're you know you have a family and you're taking road trips and you'd rather just pull over and fill up in 30 seconds then sure but honestly if i had to pick between the two 100 percent, i would pick the polestar i've become an ev snob this car really is gorgeous but it just almost doesn't make sense anymore to have a gas-powered car as always thank you for tuning in for another episode of queers and steers jj see you next time